uh, anybody's dream by Reginald is a story, in a sense. Uh, I basically had in mind when I uh, created that name the idea of saying that whatever you can imagine in life, you can have it. It's anybody's dream. When I first came here, it was raw. Right around the time of, of the riots, it did not affect me as it did some people that were right there in the mix of it, if you will. 71 people injured, 10 new arrests tonight, bringing the total now to 30 arrests. And that's the sound of police firing shotguns with rubber bullets and bean bags into the crowd at Washington Park in Over the Rhine. That changed uh, the way we saw things here in Cincinnati a lot. But as far as I'm concerned, as a business owner and as a human being, that didn't change me. I still believe that there's still hope. We sell two cent candy and the rainbow. I sell things that people don't uh, commonly have anymore or you don't hardly see anymore. I'm the old five and dime mentality, if you will. On the far wall over here, I have some toys, uh, some action figures for boys, uh, some Hot Wheels, some baby dolls, some fake blood. And behind me, I have over here some uh, winter stuff since we're just on the tail end of the winter, some scullies and that kind of thing, perfumes for the ladies and some cologne for the men as well. I have people who come to me for counseling sometimes in the store. I've had people come in the store and say, is, is that your picture on that wall? or the window of that store next door or the martial arts school, and I say, no, it's not. Then they'll stop and look back at me and they say, yes, it is. I didn't know you did that. I say, I do a lot of things. That's the rainbow. So I'm a mentor. I'm a deacon. I'm a minister. I'm a retail owner. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm, I'm what I choose to be. And that is my encouragement to anyone who comes uh, or crosses my path, I should say, Whatever you want, it's yours. It's the rainbow. There's no difference between walking there and seeing them down there, coming in here and seeing them in here. Same demeanor, same smile, same attitude, just peaceful, nice. And that was the first thing I knew. And everyone I know that's met him also the same thing. He is just the nicest guy. He wanted to bring back the old fashioned days. You might have 50 cents in there, you got a bag full of candy when you left. They were happy. So that's everybody's dream. It's got a nice variety of things in there also. I know a lot about the candy shop. I used to work there. I almost worked there for two years. When he started selling underwear and stuff, people came in. They were like, oh, you see your panties. I was like, people. Oh, my goodness. I might be uh, telling some secrets. I get a substantial amount of women buying lingerie. A lot of them don't want to admit sometimes that uh, they're uh, as big as they are. <laughs> so I have to have some some larger panties, some larger lingerie for the women because uh, some of the sizes vary. You know, I grew up in, a, in a, a rough neighborhood where we had a lot of small stores and whatnot. But I walked in there and I, I, there was an immediate feel when you walk in that little store. It was just, you know, it's the neighborhood store. And I walked in there, you know, people were in and out constantly. I was surprised at how busy it was. And everyone seems to know everybody. So it's pretty cool. I sell two cent candy, three cent candy, five cent candy, and everything up from that. The most popular candy that I carry in anybody's dream is really the dream of a lot of my children and adults alike. The Fruities by Tootsie Roll. Can't keep them. Can't keep the container full. Every day I sell two to three dollars worth of candy per person. That's a lot of candy to be selling. And you know, it's quite interesting. Uh, when I looked at my inventory, uh, uh, purchases uh, for the past year in 2012, I purchased uh, over $20,000 in candy just last year. That's amazing. In the store, he can joke and clown and laugh and play. In class, he does too, but for the most part, what you do inside of this Deljang is serious. You can't judge a book by its cover. I mean, he has that Thing about him that once he says it, you know it's true. I never will forget this, and my memory is that good. I saw a commercial of Bruce Lee. It was Fist of Fury, and he was leaping off the screen, if you will. That's the, that was the catalyst that started me in martial arts because I think we were sort of kindred spirits in a sense. You know how you're trying to find your niche in life? And when I saw that, I knew that, that that's what I really wanted in life. 
Do you know when water, something as simple as water dripping on a stone, wears a, a groove in the stone? After a while, it makes the stone smooth. Did you know that? I find that a lot of the guys on my constituents uh, in, in martial arts usually move out to an affluent neighborhood with their schools. But I always had my heart in the inner city. You know, who cares about these people? You know, who's going to take care of the same thing that they want? Everybody uh, that's wealthy can pay for martial arts. So I charge today what I was charged in the 70s. I charge $40 a month for martial arts. And you won't find anyone charging $40 a month for martial arts. So these guys are $100 and $200 a month and make you sign a contract. But because I know I'm dealing with people who have little, that's always been my motto, if you will. You know, uh, I find like if, if you want to learn martial arts and you show a sincerity to me, I'll, I'll teach you. We'll make some sort of arrangement. If, if it's nothing more than you sweeping the school, or if you can pay $10, that's fine. If you show me that you're earnest about it, then you'll be a student. If I had a dream, it would be to bring back harmony, uh, irrespective of what your race, your ethnicity is, your, your color or creed. If I made it here 10 years in this little borough uh, against all of this adversity and so forth, the changes of downtown and the riots and so forth and the prostitutes on the street that are no longer here and all of the new condominiums being built up around us and all of the gentrification of the black folks down here and this kind of thing. If I made it through that, the next step has to be the greatest step. And that's gonna be the step that's gonna help those people who really need it.